how to stop giving the devil a foothold in your life the bible tells us in ephesians 4 27 do not give the devil a foothold a foothold is somewhere where the devil puts his foot he lodges his foot so he can take a, the next step and then the next step into your life and so the bible says do not give the devil a foothold because once we give the devil a foothold he has the right to come into our lives for we are the ones who have given him that foothold without giving him rights he has no right but when you give him the right he has a right to come in when you give him a foothold he has the right to put his foot and then his next foot and so on and so forth so don't give the devil a foothold as says the bible because then he has the right to come in and then you will suffer the consequences of your wrong choices and so how do we give hang on a minute so how do we give the devil a foothold there are many ways we give the devil a foothold and if you read the holy bible you will know all of the ways that give the devil a foothold that god tells you do this and we don't do or he says don't do this and we do so for example sin gives the devil a foothold rebellion which is the equivalent of witchcraft says the bible gives the devil a foothold lying stealing gives the devil a foothold fornication adultery idolatry gives the devil a foothold basically everything and anything that is not of god gives the devil a foothold when the bible tells you don't lie it's not because god wants you to suffer it's because he knows that if you lie you open the door and you give access to the lying spirit to come into your life and start causing havoc in your life when the bible says don't steal it's because he knows that if you go and steal you are operating not from a place of god but from a place of the evil one because these are not traits of god but traits of the evil one and therefore you are giving the devil a foothold when the bible says don't slander don't do this don't do that and we go out and do these things anyway it's because god knows that by doing so we are giving the devil a foothold and so when god tells us in the bible do this it's because he knows if we when god tells us in the bible don't do this it's because he knows if we go out and do that thing we will give the devil a foothold don't blame don't complain don't be anxious don't fear don't worry don't hate don't covet don't be envious don't speak foolishly don't speak foul language because he knows that when we do these things we are giving the devil a foothold ephesians chapter 4 verses 25 through 28 each one of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor for we are all members of one body in your anger do not sin do not let the sun go down while you are still angry and do not give the devil a foothold anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer but must work doing something useful with their hands that they may have something to share with those in need those who have been stealing steal no more those who have been lying lie no more those who have been coveting covet no more because by doing these things you're giving the devil a foothold but it also goes the other way when the bible tells us to do something and we do not do it once again god's telling us do these things because he knows that if we don't do it, again we're giving the devil a foothold so for example god tells us love your neighbor uh, worship the lord your god with all your mind love the lord your god with all your mind all your heart all your strength treat others how you want to be treated help your neighbor bless those who curse you pray for those who hurt you tells us to forgive tells us to love and so on and so forth let's go to luke chapter 6 verses 27 through 31 love your enemies there's a command right there that's something god's telling you to do love your enemies god's not saying <coughs> if you want to no it's a clear straightforward command love your enemies because God knows when you do not love your enemies and you start hating your enemies, many things can come from just that. When you're, when you're not loving your enemies, so someone's done something to you and you're not loving your enemy, you open the door for all sorts of um, bitterness to come in, 
resentment to come in, hate to come in, revenge to come in. Things can progress from there and turn into judgment, turn into slander, turn into murder, turn into many things. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. When God gives you this command, go and do good to those who hate you, it's because you know, it's because he knows that when, you, when you're not doing good to those who hate you, you're giving the devil a foothold. And when the devil comes in, he will cause you to do evil to those who hate you. So he will cause you to return the evil that was done to you. Can you see? It doesn't just stop there. Once you give the devil a foothold, it will actually work against you, work against the person, work against the whole situation. So when, when God says do good to those who hate you, it's not just because it's not because God wants you to suffer. It's because you know when you don't do good to those who hate you, you open the devil for all sorts of bitterness and things like that to come in. You're giving the devil a foothold. He's coming in with all this bitterness, all this judgment, all this everything. And then it will escalate from there. And what's in your mind will sink down to your heart. And then what's in what's in your heart will come out of you. Because the Bible says, out of the heart flow the issues of life. So you'll start speaking with that bitterness now. You'll start speaking with that resentment now. Your actions will be fueled from that resentment. And you'll start showing up in the world as that bitter person. And you will go out and you will do bitter over here and bitter over there. And don't just think it will be just toward the person that has done something to you. It progresses when the devil comes in. His plan is to escalate, escalate, escalate everything. So it will spread not just to that person, but to others around you. Have you noticed sometimes you're, you're stressed at work with a colleague or you've got some bitterness going on with a colleague and you're trying to keep it cool or whatever, but then you go home and you explode on your kids or you explode on your spouse. Satan just doesn't leave it there. He escalates until it takes up other areas of your life as well. Many people have divorced due to that. It continues to say, bless those who curse you. That's a straightforward command. God is telling you to do this. He's telling you, bless those who curse you. Because God knows if you don't bless those who curse you, you're giving the devil a foothold and he will come in and he will cause you to curse those who curse you. Right? Pray for those who mistreat you. Ah, there's another thing that God's telling us to do. Again, it's a straightforward command. Pray for those who mistreat you. Why is God telling us to pray for people who mistreat us? They've mistreated me. Why do I have to pray for them? Because God knows when you do not pray for those who mistreat you, you give the devil a foothold and he will come in and he will cause you all this evil in your heart to grow until you, it grows into an unrighteous heart. You're thinking it, you're feeling it, you're speaking it creating worst case scenarios in your mind of what they did and you start replaying in your mind what they did and then the next thing you want to do is mistreat them back God knows what's coming he knows what's ahead he knows the human heart he knows the deceptions of the evil one he knows the human heart and God knows if you do not pray for those who mistreat you there will come a day, maybe not now, maybe a year from now, but there will come a day where you will want to mistreat the person who mistreated you. Maybe not, not to that extent, but there will be some kind of unrighteousness in the heart. You don't want unrighteousness in your heart. You want righteousness in your heart because when we go to Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 18 it says pick up your shield of faith when it's talking about the spiritual armor to protect yourself um shield of faith the belt of truth and so on and so forth one of the armor pieces is um the um the the breastplate of righteousness the breastplate is what protected the roman soldiers from attacks coming from the enemies attacks to their heart attacks to their organs and so on and so forth in the spiritual but, uh, a realm because we're not fighting physical soldiers we're fighting spiritual demons uh, we don't need the physical armor but we need the spiritual armor because we're fighting spiritual enemy not physical enemies and so the spiritual armor to protect our hearts from the attacks of the enemy is righteousness and when you start allowing all these things to come into your heart then uh, you're not protecting then the heart is now unrighteous and not a righteous so it's like letting down your breastplate of righteousness so uh, you're completely open to the attacks of the enemy 
it's like a, <clears throat> a soldier removing his breastplate or well, he's open very sensitive and open to the attacks of the enemy one attack from the enemy and the soldier's dead because we're fighting a spiritual uh, battles with spiritual enemy your breastplate to protect your heart is righteousness and when you let go of righteousness there's no protection on your heart. Now the enemy with one attack can fill your heart with all sorts of unrighteousness, all sorts of evil. And that's why God says, pray for those who mistreat you. Don't give the devil a foothold. Pray for those who mistreat you so you don't give the devil a devil a foothold. Because once you give the devil a foothold, he will attack your heart. And he will fill your heart with all sorts of bitterness and resentment and hate and evil. And that's not how you walk holy with God. And then you think, why all this negativity in my life? Why all this negativity in my mind? Why all this negativity in my heart? Maybe it's because you've let down your spiritual armor, making yourself open and receptive to all the attacks of the enemy. So when God says, do something or don't do something, he has a reason. Let's keep going. If someone slaps you on the one cheek, then turn them the other also. If someone takes your coat, give them your shirt also. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, don't demand it back. Do not do to others as you would have them do to you. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Forgive others because you want others to forgive you. Be nice because you want others to be nice to you. Love your neighbor because you want others to love you. Make someone feel comfortable because you want others to make you feel comfortable right God has a reason for everything he says each command has a purpose each command of God whether he says do this or don't do this either way each command has a purpose and it's always for your own good always for your own good it will never be something that's not for your own good that's the work of the devil that's not the work of God people think following the commands of God is God trying to control you and you've got no say over your life that's absolutely not true. Otherwise, God wouldn't have given you free will to choose between him and the evil one. God's given you free will because he wants you to choose. Free will means freedom, right? Freedom to choose. And so people think that following the commands of God is just I have absolutely no control if I do that. It's um, uh, God's trying to control me. No, following the commands of God is God leading you into freedom. So you're not bound to the things of the de devil bound to that resentment in your heart that you just can't be free from see that's not freedom that's why god's telling you do it this way bound to that hate in your heart that you can't get free from bound to the negative thoughts in your mind that you can't get free from bound to that depression bound to that worry bound to that anxiety bound to those drugs bound to the pornography bound to the and you think that's freedom you think God wants to take your freedom because he's telling you do it this way. No, God's telling you do it this way or don't do it the other way So because he, he's leading you to freedom. Right? When you stick to the rules of God, no disaster comes near you. No disaster comes near you. Affliction uh, 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 in spiritual warfare, things like that, testing and things like that, uh, uh, come and that's normal but disaster won't come near you disaster will not come near your tent you find that in psalm 91 but when you violate the spiritual principles of god disaster comes near you why because you give the devil a foothold and then the devil comes in and brings disaster into your life it's not god that brings disaster into your life it is the consequences of your choices that bring disaster into your life you you chose to give the devil a foothold when God specifically told you do it this way or don't do it this way. God specifically told you. And God's given you free will to choose. Because it's not a controlling God where he grabs you by the neck and says do it this way, do it this way. No, he gives you free will. He said this is the way and now you get to choose. Because the fact that you give free will to someone is, is showing love. Control is not love. Free will is control. So the, pers the, the person can willfully choose God that's love that's a love relationship now it's like taking a man or a woman and locking them up in the in a room of the house and say you're not leaving because you need to stay with me forever you're not leaving you're not leaving that's not love that's control love is when you unlock the door you give them free will 
and they willfully choose to be faithful they willfully choose to stay with you they willfully choose to love you that's a love relationship now that's exactly what god does right so disaster comes when you violate the ways of god because you with your choices have given the devil a foothold you you're the one that makes yourself open to demonic things to come to you you're the one that makes yourself open to satan and his demons you're the one that makes yourself open to demonic ways ways that are not of god hate blame jealousy lying pornography masturbation new age uh, spirituality false religions false gods whatever it is that you're into everything that is not of god you make yourself open and receptive for the enemy to come in and bound you to these things it's like taking um handcuffs bound bounding the one side of the handcuff to the anger and the other side of the handcuff of the handcuff to you so you're chained to anger or bounding you and the other side of the handcuff to pornography so you can't free you're bound to that pornography you can't be free or it can bound you to false religions false gods it can bound you to hate and blame and resentment and jealousy or whatever because you open the door god never put you in chains your your wrong choices put you in chains so now, put you in chains so now you're suffering the consequences of your wrong choices and if that's not enough, many people would turn around and say, well, if God loved me, if God was real, why would he allow this to happen? And you're just adding fuel to the fire. Instead of repenting and saying, repenting and say, Jesus, save me. And Jesus will come and save you. He who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, says the Bible. You just call to Jesus with your heart, wholeheartedly and say, Jesus, come and save me. And Jesus will step in and save you. Through faith. By faith through faith by the grace of God and what's more is the more you go deeper into these things the more you the more you do these things that are just not of God the deeper and deeper and deeper you go so the more deceived 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 blinded by the wall pulled over your eyes by the devil until you wake up one morning without knowing it it's become your lifestyle you live like that now that's become your new normal to the point where you can't hear God's voice anymore. To the point where the devil is speaking to you and you're thinking it's God speaking to you. Deception is so big. You've distanced yourself so much from God that all you feel is pain, all you feel is suffering. You're so blinded by the deception, you're so drowning in that sin. In despair. And I'm telling you, I'm here to tell you, it's time to repent. It's time to repent of your wrongdoings. Call upon the name Jesus Christ so he can come in and save you and break those chains off you. Those spiritual handcuffs, those spiritual chains, break them off you and close all those doors. Those spiritual doors that you open for Satan and his demons to come in. Close them doors. Hmm? Otherwise you'll come back in again close them doors pray to god start spending time with god in the presence of god commune with god get in your holy bible to know the do's and the don'ts of god the commands of god so when satan tries to come in again with a lie he say ah, ah that's not of god because you know the bible right don't stop blaming god it's not god you are suffering the consequences of your own choices god has given you free will free will to think it's given your conscience to know wrong from right. So let's repent right here and right now. Wholeheartedly, with all of your being, with every fiber of your being, say, Father, I repent for my sins. Father, I repent for my sins. And if anything's coming to mind to repent specifically, repent it specifically. Confess it, repent. Confess it. So you're saying, so specifically, uh, Father, I repent for lying to my spouse. Father, I repent for getting high on drugs. Father, I repent not trusting in you. Father, I repent. Uh, getting angry with my children but whatever it is that you need to repent 
for lying, for the pornography, for the masturbation, for uh, fornication, adultery, idolatry, whatever. And then repent. Repent means you've changed your mind. You're going in a new direction. So you were thinking like that. I'm no longer thinking like that. You were on this path. I'm no longer on this path. You're completely changing in a different direction. The Bible says, he who was stealing, steal no more. So it's like that. So if you were lying, lie no more. If you were stealing, steal no more. Change your ways. But you're not going to do this by your power. It is not by your power or by your might, but by the power of the Holy Spirit who is in you. If you think you have the power to break these chains and stop these bad habits and change your ways by yourself, you won't. The demons are operating behind these things that you are doing. You may take a back seat and be quiet for a bit to make you believe that they're gone, that you're free, that everything's okay. But in time of weakness, they will jump up and they will bite you on the nose again. They will attack you again. That's why things seem okay for a few months. Oh, I didn't have that jealousy for a few months. Whoops, it's back. Didn't have that anger for a year. Oops, it's back. Because you never got rid of it to begin with. It was just taking a back seat, right? Because only Jesus can come in and free you. This is why all these worldly teachings, they don't work. Because demons are just taking a back seat, right? So repent specifically. If anything's coming to your mind to repent specifically, repent of it specifically. And then commit now to Jesus Christ. That you will live, you will live a life with Jesus Christ, for Jesus Christ, walking in the ways of Jesus Christ. Repent. Say, Jesus, come into my heart, change me. I want you to be my Lord, my Savior. As of this day forward, I start my new life with you. Ask for the Holy Spirit to come and fill you, and day by day, the Holy Spirit will start leading you away from that path that is not of God and toward the path that is God. Sometimes you will slip and fall, but you just get back up and you just keep going. You repent again and you keep going. And if you fall again, repent again and keep going. As many times as you fall and you get up and you ask for forgiveness, God forgives you every single time. But it doesn't apply to the people who are continuously living in sin, deliberately and saying, oh, well, God's going to forgive me. That, that doesn't apply to you. All right. So with that being said, the books can be purchased below. Worldly life of deception. New age to Jesus Christ. Who is God? These are the first three Christian books that I wrote. I'm currently writing. Um, what do you call it? Spiritual warfare, which is why I'm under a lot of spiritual warfare. I'm under spiritual warfare right now as we speak. The pressure is just coming up against me. But it is what it is. And a breakthrough is coming. Some chains are about to fall. And this is why the pressure... And if I just push through, the chains are about to fall. And this is why the pressure is so intense victory is already the lord's and i'm here to encourage you keep going right anointing oil can be found below free of charge but you pray for your ship for the shipping if you need prayers deliverance healing message me on uh social media platforms facebook linkedin so on and so forth god bless you